Oh, well. We'll call the uh, 16th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Sue, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Present. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Serta? Here. Groff? Excused. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Excused. Rinfleisch? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Werner? Here. 13 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the minutes of the last Common Council meeting uh, be approved and that the same stand is entered on the record. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the minutes of the previous Council meeting be approved. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <clears throat> carried. Pledge of Allegiance this evening. We have Boy Scout Troop 818 with us this evening. <coughs> and Dan McKenzie's the Scoutmaster. Dan, no? Yes? Would you bring your troop up, please, and lead us in a pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thanks. Steve, are the nations? This letter to the mayor from uh, Dieter Helm indicating he's uh, resigning as a member of the mayor's special international committee effective uh, November 1st. And that can be accepted and placed on file. Okay. Aldermatic candidates. We have four candidates with us this evening. They will each have five to eight minutes to speak. Steve. I have a four ballots here with their names on, so if you'd like to pick one, please, and we'll start from there. Modify a number each of them. Sure. Okay. I'll take one. Or you want to, Sue? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Sue. And the first speaker will be Mr. Kevin Messner. Kevin, if you could come up to the mic, please. <laughs> Kevin and you will have up to eight minutes. Great, thank you very much. Thanks. Well, good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, members of the public. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak with you this evening. I'm here tonight to ask for your consideration and vote for appointment to the position of Alderman for District 6. So let me begin by offering a brief personal introduction. My name is Kevin Messner. I'm 35 years old and reside at 2013 Broadway Avenue with my wife, Lisa. A lifelong resident of Sheboygan. I'm a graduate of Sheboygan South High School, the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan Extension, and Concordia University with a degree in business management and communication. I've held positions locally with Bemis, Kohler Company, Hasten Manufacturing, and Ross Office Products. I'm currently employed full-time for HG Weber and Company of Kiel. We're a mid-sized paper converting equipment provider, and I'm the information <laughs> technology manager. This position provides me a keen awareness of the business and technological challenges in today's economy. Additionally, as a state licensed real estate broker, I'm a past member of the local board of realtors and the state and national realtor associations, having spent over five years actively listing and selling homes here in Sheboygan. Currently, I maintain a small real estate management company with properties located in the city of Sheboygan as well as throughout the county, I witnessed firsthand 
the struggles of our property owners and those faced by our tenants. Affordable housing, reasonable property taxes, the availability of city services, stable infrastructure and recreational opportunities, as well as a healthy economic and employment climate are the necessities of a thriving city and should be a champion of city government. I am a member of the Lakeshore Apartment Association, an organization representing the interest of property owners in Sheboygan County, and have been fortunate to serve on their board of directors. I am also an active member of the Lakeshore Sunrise Kiwanis Club, serving in a leadership capacity both locally and in the state Kiwanis organization. For those of you not familiar with Kiwanis, this is an organization whose motto, serving the children of the world, epitomizes community service and involvement. It is because of this involvement that I've been able to assist other community groups and efforts including the Boys and Curls Club's Gus Mackard Tournament, Maywood's Earth Ride, the Festival of Trees, and the JC's Bratwurst Day. And with less fanfare, we Kiwanians contribute through the city's Adopt-a-Street program at the Salvation Army's Red Cattle Drive, and I think most importantly in our sponsorship of the annual high school graduation celebration. Now, although I have no previous political experience, I consider this not a failing, but an opportunity. And like many of you, I am able to approach this position without any preconceived ideas or notions as to how things must be done or have always been done. Instead, I promise to ask why and listen openly to all points of debate before arriving at a conclusion or making a decision. And although it is possible on occasion that we may not agree and my conclusions or my decisions may even be unpopular, I promise to maintain my position. No, this is not stubbornness or an unwillingness to compromise, but an adherence to my principles. Democracy, the very heart of politics, is about opinions and choices. It's about the majority and minority position. You know, often we hear people speak ill of partisan politics, but I believe partisan politics is good. It guarantees that the minority opinion is heard, and often being a holder of minority opinions myself, I appreciate it. It ensures that in the face of a majority position, a person has the right to say, I disagree, that I have a different idea. But government is about decision. And after all the discussion, after all the positions are heard, a decision must be made. So for me, it is doing what we as individuals believe is best for those we serve and living with those consequences. Often this means building consensus. Many times it means compromise, but it does not mean that everyone gets what they want. And occasionally some people are not always happy. Here's where it is often easy to decide based upon popularity. But popular isn't always best or right. Here's where one's convictions are tested. Alexander Hamilton once said, he who stands for nothing falls for anything. Let me end by saying that I'm proud to support our community through Kiwanis, and with your help, I would like to join you in serving our city as an alderman. And with that, I would be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Kevin. Um, the second candidate would be Curtis Jackson, Jr. Curtis, you will have eight minutes. Honorable Mayor Schramm and members of the Common Council, I would first like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak here tonight. In 1983, I graduated an honor roll student from Elkhart Lake Glenbula High School. Upon graduation, I started working for minimum wage in a local factory. After a couple years and several promotions, I became department supervisor and eventually oversaw all aspects of the operation of the seasonal second shift. After eight years, I decided to change careers. I took a cut in pay and became a pre-apprentice carpenter in 1992. In 1996, I completed the four-year apprenticeship program at the top of my class. I, completed, I competed in and took first place in the state of Wisconsin carpenter apprenticeship contest that same year. I was also selected to give the commencement address at graduation of all apprentice program trades at LTC. 
1998, I completed the Associated General Contractors of Wisconsin's two-year supervisory training program, and I have been employed by Quash's Construction for most of the time as a carpenter, which amounts to over eight years. I have worked there as a foreman, an interim job superintendent, and as a carpenter. In 1996, I was elected vice president of Carpenters Local 731, where I have served as an officer ever since, currently as treasurer. In 1996, I also became the first chairman of our newly formed Community Services Committee. And over the past eight years as chairman, I have tried to lead by example by serving this community and helping others by volunteering over 1,700 hours of my time through organizations such as Christmas and May Rebuilding Together, where I was recently elected to the Board of Directors and serve as Director of House Captains and Skilled Labor Leaders. There I help coordinate the building of wheelchair ramps for the handicapped and making homes warm, safe, and dry for low-income and mostly elderly or handicapped homeowners who could not otherwise afford the repairs. All this is done with the generosity of corporate donors and the volunteers from both the corporate and skilled labor. We as carpenters have helped the United Way, Safe Harbor, Bridgeway House, the Literacy Council, Blue Line Center, Sheboygan A's, Early Learning Center, the YMCA, Camp Wicota, Little Red Schoolhouse, Camp Evergreen, and many more organizations over the years, including the Boy Scouts of America, where I have volunteered the last six years as a Cub Scout leader with PAC 3827, and where I also serve as camp coordinator and every summer take time off of work to take a group of children to summer camp. Also this year, I put over 200 hours into designing and building a new four-lane Pinewood Derby track that the Cub Scouts from across the city will be racing on for many years to come. I hope someday to watch my grandchildren race on that track. This past spring, I helped with connecting communities at the John Michael Kohler Art Center, a joint performance by the San Francisco Dance Company, and it brought together people from the German, Hispanic, and Hmong communities within Sheboygan. I have given 1,700 hours back to this community that provides my livelihood through both public and private construction projects. I believe an elected official is a servant to the public, and community service is a big part of being a servant. That's what this community is about, people helping people. I have also served on Local 731's political committee for the past 10 years and the organizing committee for the past seven years. I was elected to serve on a 13-member executive committee of the 7,000-plus member Northern Wisconsin Regional Council of Carpenters. I also serve, serve there as chairman of the Newsletter and Community Services Committee. This year, I was elected to a seventh term as treasurer for Whitetail Bowhunters in Johnsonville. I'm a life member of the North American Hunting Club and a volunteer member of the Board of Directors of Sheboygan Child Care Center. I am the current chairman and eight-year member of the Citizen Advisory Committee on Community Development twice reappointed by Mayor Schramm. I am a 23-year member of Bethany Reformed Church, where we help with the church youth group. My wife teaches Sunday school, and I serve on the property management committee. My wife Mary and I are raising our sons Curtis and Tyler here in Sheboygan, and I will work hard to make Sheboygan a place that they want to stay and raise their families. I believe the budget is going to be one of the biggest issues facing the Common Council in the next few years. The citizens are fed up with taxes continually going up, but on the other hand, they don't want to see services cut either. It'll be tough to prioritize city services without stepping on someone's toes. No matter what we do, someone will not be happy with the decisions made on the budget. We need to try to hold the line on taxes, prioritize services, combine what services we can, and not make cuts to departments that generate more revenue than their budget. In 2005, we'll have an increased tax base with the South Pier District, and I believe that having the condo sold at Blue Harbor and new investors looking to build new businesses there is indicative of where the development of the South Pier District is headed. A few months ago, we had an open seat to fill, the six, to fill in the 6th District. At that point in time, anyone seriously interested in serving as an alder person could have run. Running a political campaign to seek public office is a lot of hard work, as all of you here know from experiencing it yourself. There are the signatures needed for nomination, the fundraisers to pay for the yard signs and literature you give out, the candidate screenings, and questionnaires from all the different groups in town. The most important part of this is the countless days you spent knocking on doors in the middle of winter 
trying to reach out to the constituents to support you. In April, I did not win the election, but 44% of the constituents did support me. I was able to raise in excess of $4,000 for my campaign. I think for a first timer, I did pretty well. I would hope that whoever this council selects tonight to fill the opening would have the opportunity to serve this community for more than just five months. With nomination papers needing to be filed in only a few weeks, I think it would be in poor taste to oppose the person who is selected tonight without giving them a chance to prove themselves. I believe you need to appoint someone that will be open and responsive to public input, is willing to ask tough questions, invest the time in researching the issues, and wanting to work together with the council for the betterment of this city. We need someone who will stand up for the citizens of this district and the city, someone to be the voice for the elderly and working families equally. We need someone who will seek accountability and help prioritize services of the city. We need someone who will work towards reducing crime and gang activities in our neighborhoods. We need someone who will work for Sheboygan's future while protecting its past. We need someone we can trust to represent our views. We need someone that will act as a servant to the people they represent. I believe I am that person. I am here to stand up for and serve the people of Sheboygan through leadership with honesty and fiscal responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Radke. Jeff, you will have eight, up to eight minutes. Okay. Mr. Mayor, members of the Common Council and citizens of Sheboygan, my name is Jeff Ratkin. I'm a 41-year-old lifelong resident of the city of Sheboygan. I'm currently a homeowner on South 19th Street, 1443A, and I'm a full-time sales associate uh, for U.S. Cellular here in Sheboygan. And I've worked in a various different capacities in factories, public services, well, should say with the public, and different retail establishments and things. So I uh, have a good feel for what the people really want to talk about. I deal with people each and every day, listen to them, weigh their wants, their needs against everything. But I come before you tonight to tell you why I want to fill this vacancy on the Common Council, because I believe I can make a difference for the people of the 6th Automatic District and the city of Sheboygan. I'm an independent mind looking only what's best for Sheboygan. That's all I've ever wanted to see. No hidden agendas, no ties to any part of city government, no ties to any of the groups that have looked at filing criminal charges, doing petition drives to overturn existing legislation. Uh, their devotion to their causes are great. I mean, I want to see that continue, that people are looking at both sides of the issue because that's what we need to keep open government working here in Sheboygan. The recent past has no bearing on why I'm here, but the people of the 6th District do, and my job would be to listen to their concerns, their problems, their needs, their wants, and weigh them out and help them get the answers to the questions that they have and uh, with that in mind on every vote that would be taken here in the council. In these times of shrinking budgets and rising costs, the city is going to be faced with some tough choices that could impact the future of the city for many years to come. Some of these choices can be easy, but many are going to be extremely difficult. But in any case, the city needs leaders to look at and weigh in on what's best for the district and the city as a whole. Now, some of the state mandates that we have with the costs passed on to the local property taxpayers are just getting to be burdensome for a lot of communities, and the state continues to cut the aids they're sending to the cities. In some of these cases, we need to start talking to our state representatives and have them look at ways in Madison to help us either fund or eliminate these mandates. Um, some cases, we need to look at cutting the existing costs. I had one case a couple of years ago, I was talking to a former city clerk that told me the city spends thousands of dollars to have the minutes of the Common Council published. In today's world, why are we spending all those thousands with the the world of technology, the amount of money she told me at that time could put a couple of people out cutting city park grass in the summer and making the city look beautiful rather than putting it into the newspaper. We can put that out on the, out on the internet, post it in City Hall, the fire stations, the library, the police station, those minutes. If somebody really wants it, we can mail it to them. It's got to be a lot less expensive. Something to look into with our state representatives. The residents have also been subjected to a lot of extra taxes because of duplicate services by the city and the county. I was talking to the county board supervisor a couple weeks ago, and he told me that committee is stalled that's looking at the shared services. And if that's the case, it needs to be jump-started because the city of Sheboygan taxpayers can't be uh, continuing to pay for double services 
and uh, shared services isn't a dream anymore. It's gotta become a reality in order to hold the line in the tax levy. Uh, there's a recent tax I was just checking on. Nobody at the county can seem to answer the question. I need to call Madison to find out exactly what it's about. And that's what we need to find out. Why are we being taxed and where can we cut those taxes between the county and the city to make it more beneficial? Because we save money here in the city, the whole county saves. And that's gonna benefit everybody, not just us. And the city deserves the best that their dollars can buy. We owe it to them to continue to identify ways of improving the city infrastructure while maintaining a cost-effective operation. Now, some of the operations maybe need to be fine-tuned or retooled to become cost-effective. So I'd like to see the city workers come to the council with ideas on how they think we can improve the services that we provide. Our city employees are the strongest asset that this council has. They're the people that work day and night, 365 days a year, to keep the city operational. I mean, middle of the winter time, Christmas Eve, they're all plowing snow, salting the streets just to keep the city going. They're the people that know what's best for the city and how to get those functions running properly and smoothly and how to save that money. I mean, we're living in a world-class city and I've said it's a sleeping giant for a lot, a lot of years. When I travel the world, people have heard of this community. I was just in New England over the weekend and you'd be surprised that people have heard of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Maybe it's just because of the funny name from the song, but Maybe not, but we have a lot to be proud of and a wonderful reputation we've built up over the years needs to be held on here. I'm not saying that we don't have problems because we do, but if we focus on those positives we've built on, those negatives will work their way out in a much more easier manner. And of course with fresh ideas come a lot of fresh, uh, fresh faces come a lot of fresh ideas. Some may have been tried and explored before, some maybe not. But in any case, a new face is always in the best interest of any organization. In this case, the tenure, many of you people in the council will be there to help those fresh ideas either become reality or just another idea simply by your years of experience to help the person along. I'm more than willing to work and listen to all ideas from all avenues. It's in the best interest of the city and the residents of the district to look at all the possibility, weighing in, weighing in on all the facts, listening to all the concerns of the residents, and then fulfilling the wish of the people. As I said earlier, there will be tough choices to make and many unpopular decisions, but that's the job I'm asking for tonight. And uh, as uh, Curtis Jackson said, if I am not chosen tonight, I will not run against the person that is chosen in all fairness, because as he said, next month we have to start doing uh, uh, the papers for uh, nomination. I don't wanna have somebody up against that and trying to be up here representing us and doing the best possible job. That's just not fair to that person. So I would be willing to sit back and wait and say, let the man have two years, let him do his thing and then we'll take a look at it in two years. Let him have a chance because in one month's time, nobody's gonna learn how to do this. I'm sure all you folks took a little while, a couple months, maybe a year or two to really get into the swing of it and that's what I wanna see. If I am chosen, I will run. If I'm not chosen, I won't in all fairness to whoever is chosen. So that's where I stand and I thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. <clears throat> and the final one is Gary Laux. Gary, you will have up to eight minutes. Thank you. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen. Conventional wisdom often said uh, you should never follow an act with young children or small pets in it. I think uh, tonight we should maybe add aldermanic candidates. Uh, those guys are good. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep this real short, real sweet. My name is Gary Laux. I'm 53 years old and a lifelong resident of the city of Sheboygan. My wife Joanne is with me here tonight. And last September we celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary. We've owned our own home on South 17th Street and lived there for the past 27 years. So we know the pain of that tax bill showing up every uh, December in the mailbox and we grit our teeth to see how much it has gone up over the last year. We raised two wonderful sons in that home. The eldest went to UW-Madison where he received his master's degree in engineering and he's now living and working in California de designing, excuse me, satellites. So that old toss off line, it's only rocket science. Well, in my house, sometimes it really is rocket <laughs> science. <clears throat> my youngest son, is a senior at UW-Milwaukee, and he expects to graduate this spring in computer technologies and business management. So he speaks in that 
techno geek <laughs> language that's, I believe, somewhere uh, derived from English. So one of the reasons why I'm running for alderman is to simply talk to somebody in plain English. But with two children in college, you can understand how we've learned to live very quickly within a tight budget. Since 1974, I've worked at Vinyl Plastics on the South Side. Many of you probably know that uh, that business is now up for sale. Some of the divisions have already been sold. So now I'm learning firsthand that anxiety and fear that comes with knowing that uh, a new owner is coming in. Perhaps he'll close the doors and move the jobs somewhere else. It's a, really a terrible feeling and one which all too many people in this city and county already know too well. Early in my employment at Vinyl Plastics, I became involved in their local union. I was elected president of the union and held that position for 21 years. During that time, I negotiated quite a few contracts, all of which uh, were very beneficial to, the, to my membership. They came in on time, and never once did I have to call a work stoppage to get the job done. I fought and won many grievances and arbitration cases against the company in those years, and I'm proud of those victories. But I'm also proud of the times when we were uh, working together, company and union, to create policy and procedures which resulted in a safer, a healthier, and a more equitable workplace for everyone. I still belong to the same church where I was baptized, and I've served as an elder, a deacon, and congregation president. I chaired their long-range planning committee, their finance committee, and their building committees. And last but not least, for the last 17 years, I have served on Sheboygan's Parking and Transit Committee. All right, Ron. <laughs> Without political records to consider, all you have to, tonight to make your decision on is on character. And that's why I mentioned these things that uh, I have just listed. I think they show that I'm a person of stability and determination. They show commitment and resolve. And rooted in my faith, they show a willingness to serve others, not for personal gain, but for the common good. Sheboygan is my home, and I love it here. When I look at all the development that's going on along the riverfront and over at Blue Harbor, when I look down 8th Street and see the theater renovations and the growth of the buildings downtown, I'm filled with pride and encouragement and excitement. What better way to give something back to the city that's given me so much? What better way to become part of and to ensure its bright future than to agree to become part of this council. That's why I want to become the alderman for the 6th district. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> alderman Warner. So thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion that the following names be placed in nomination for the position of 6th district alderperson, Gary Locks. Jeff Radke, Curtis Jackson Jr., and Kevin Messner. Voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. And with that, I would move to close the nominations. Second. Yeah. We have a motion and a second before us. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Sue. All in favor of it? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Do you want me to direct them that they have to sign their name on there? Would you like me to direct them? Yeah. <clears throat> on your, <clears throat> excuse me, on your ballots, it will say on there, I vote for, you put the candidate's name on the top line, and my name is, then you put your name underneath that, and then Steve will collect it. After you're done. Yeah, is there open ballots meaning you have to indicate your own name as well? I'm 
Okay, so. Right. <clears throat> okay, the vote is as follows. Kevin Messner, zero. Jeff Radke, zero. Curtis Jackson, Jr., three. And Gary Laux, ten. Congratulations, Gary Laux. Alderman Lauchs, would you like to sit in your chair, please? Can't vote yet until you're sworn in, but please participate in the meeting. I'd like to thank everyone else for coming and participating in the process. Too bad we're all in the same district. Yeah. yeah. Okay, moving on. Public forum. Okay. Um, Dan Verhasselt. Dan, once again, I need your address, please. <laughs> Should have been memorized. Uh, 705 Fairway Drive. 705 Fairway Drive, Sheboygan. Correct. Okay. And you will have five minutes, Dan. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank everybody here, your Honorable Mayor, Council members. Sue and Steve as well. Again, I'm here representing the Friends of Sheboygan's Park, and this is my third time in four months talking to this group. So you can imagine what my position is, but I did want to clarify that we are here to save the park. We have nothing against the police, and we believe a police station should be built, just not on Sheridan Park. Um, but just coming to more recent terms here, more um, current matters, I guess. At the last council meeting, November 1st, I was very intrigued to see some of the new positions by both the mayor and by Alder Alderman Warner. It appears that the mayor no longer favors the county site, as he said earlier. I had a chance to sit with you in your office here three months ago, three and a half months ago, and you were pretty strong in your conviction that the county site was the way to go, regardless of the council vote. And I was glad to hear that. Over last week, you came back and said that public safety is where you're standing over popular opinion. 
Personally, I wonder what your position really ever was, and I don't mean that as an insult, but I do understand the pressures that are on you from both sides. Um, and it appears that Alderman Warner has also upgraded our effort from a vocal minority to a popular opinion. Um, back in August 16th at the meeting when we tried to rescind it, you had stated that we shouldn't buckle to the opinion of the vocal minority. Well, here back on, on November 1st, you said, well, we shouldn't buckle to the opinion of, of the popular vote. So I'm not really sure which it is right now, if we should go with the minority or the majority. At the last meeting, I really do believe in my, in my heart that the mayor and Alderman Warner single-handedly insulted nearly everybody in the room, hence showing their disconnect with the people here in the city of Sheboygan. And I say that for a couple of reasons. Uh, there were a lot of parallels made. The mayor, you made parallel to women's suffrage, that your efforts and trying to use Sheridan Park as a police station was similar to, to say, it would be Woodrow Wilson trying to attain women's voting rights. Alderman Warner, you made references to JFK and his fight for civil rights legislation. I mean, I've been busy lately, but I really don't know. I, I think we're still talking about just trying to either save Sheridan Park or destroy Sheridan Park. I don't know if we've talked about slavery or civil rights. Um, so clarify that me, with me, if you will. Uh, if we're going to make historic parallels, I don't think it should be with three presidents, and I'd be so bold as to say I think it should be with the three stooges. I think there's just a real disconnect with this city government. Not with everybody here, but I think there's a number of people on the council that just feel they're here to represent their views and not the people's views. And that makes me um, worry. But let's move on to some of the most recent arguments that have been talked about. The first one is cost. Numbers are floating around 300, 700, a million, million one, what it's going to cost to build at the county site. Let me clarify, I don't care where we build it. I think it should be central somewhat, and I think it should be a, a new station sometime in the future. But I really don't care where we build it. Uh, Bill Gehring, county board supervisors, went on record saying that he would furlough most of the expense of that site into shared services, effectively making the expenses non-existent for the taxpayer. And I don't know why that's never talked about. I've talked to nearly everyone here who opposes me over the phone over the last three months. And the only real cost that I can pick up is fiber optics. We're a block or two away from the fire station and we'd have to run fiber optics over to the 23rd Street site or the county site. Um, so that to me is the only real cost. We have a concrete slab on 23rd Street, but we also have a reinforced underground, heavily built underground parking for the Sheridan Park site. So I think it's a wash. Just don't insult us by telling us these large numbers because I think they're just out there to scare us. A second argument is public safety over popular opinion. This is one that made its head, reared its head here two weeks ago. Again, I think this is an insult to Captain Kirk and his 90 plus policemen. I think he's got quality men and I think he's a quality person that he can do his job from nearly any place in the city within the general central region of the city. So let's not, in, let's not insult him or his people. Last year, violent crime dropped in the city of Sheboygan 14.6%. Property crime dropped about 1%. So the sky isn't falling, as Chicken Little would like us to believe. So don't insult us with these scare tactics. A third argument is that time and money is already spent. We've had the experts come in. We've spent three years, four years, $50,000. Well, you know what? These experts actually gave us five sites. Because you guys were smart enough to have them recommend more than one site. And I commend you for that. So let's go to number two site tomorrow and get our work done. We can start out. We don't have to revisit the entire plan. We don't have to get the experts back in. They did their work. They gave us a second site, a third site, a fourth site, and a fifth site. So let's go to one of those sites and start tomorrow. Let's not waste any time. I agree with <coughs> Captain Kurt. A third argument, or a final argument, I guess, is that we spent a lot of money. Again, we don't need to spend any more Excuse money. Excuse me, we Dan. Have... I'm sorry. Your five minutes is up. All right. I'd like to just conclude, if I might. Five minutes, Dan. Could I, could I conclude? Just I have well, three sentences. You need to open the floor if you're going to conclude. I'm sorry? We need a motion to open the floor if we're going to extend it because it's a five minute period. Sure, I just said. We have a motion before us in a second. In favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. No. Roll call? That's fine. <clears throat> to open the floor, this is a vote. Great, to open the floor. Uh, no, to let you extend for Dan I'm to speak sorry, over to five minutes. Yes, I'm sorry. Bauman. No. Berg. No. Bonet. No. Serta. No. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sigali. Aye. No. Stefan. No. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. No. 
Warner. Ocean fails. Ocean fails. Yeah. Four eyes, nine. Thank you. Again, thank you very much. And I, I think, I guess my point was just made about the disconnect with the city government. Thanks again. Excuse me, before you go on. Alder Mercerda? Um, I Sit sure down. would like it that if uh, we give respect where respect is, is due and that uh, Captain Kirk is and Chief, Chief Kirk. Kirk. Mm -hmm. He is Chief of the Police. He has worked hard for it and he needs to be recognized as such. Please, Chief. Thank Kirk. you. Okay, next on the list. Hang on a oh, minute. I'm sorry. Also, Dan, I'd like to just, my quotes were from past President Carter and Eisenhower. And what I said was, for myself, it's not about a popular, a popular decision. It's about public safety, about protecting the very things we cherish, our neighborhoods, our playgrounds, and our children. And I will pick that over green space. And that I will stand by. Yeah. Okay, next on our list is John Burner. John, if you... <laughs> and John, I need your address again, 1919 please. 1919 Broadway. 1919 Broadway? Good evening, everybody. I'm not much on protocol here. I was going to start one way, and I'm... Just going to wing it. John, can you speak into the microphone, please, oh, so we can hear sorry. a little bit more? Thank you. As long as I don't sing, right? Okay. <laughs> I've been sitting and looking at a city map here and figuring out 14th Street and 23rd Street. And I'll tell you what. I'm sorry. I'm not really happy billing in the park. 14th Street is the center of the city. Here, I, for those who really didn't sit down and look at it, the orange is 14th Street. The green are arteries coming off of 14th Street. And then if you look above there, there's 23rd Street. Accessibility. Yes, accessibility for the police. It's called logistics. I don't have a big degree, but I was like telling the gentleman over there that was speaking. I have four of my six and a half years was spent in logistics and the service. So I know a little bit about the movement in the city. Something like the movement in the service. So then I was thinking, maybe I should take a survey. 14th Street, 23rd Street. People for 23rd Street, if they, I mean, that didn't want it on 14th Street, I showed them the map and said, can you think of an alternative? Because here is 23rd Street. And right away they said, well, you want me to sign 14th Street? Oh, you can sign any street. I went to 25 houses out of 25 houses. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people answered the doors. I guess I went at the wrong time or I was looking bad. <laughs> one woman was for, was against 14th Street and I was explaining it to her. She kept saying, you're trying to si have me sign for 14th Street. I wasn't, I just explaining. I think a lot of people Look at 14th Street, 23rd Street, and really don't see the whole city of Sheboygan. Out of uh, the seven names, five wanted 14th Street, two 23rd Street. I went at random and I picked 11th Street. I don't know what. I think that's your district. Is this on the north side? Yes, it is. Random. Didn't know anybody there. I even tried to get somebody that was raking lawns. He didn't want nothing to do with surveys. So my survey went kind of belly up. But I did get seven people. So it didn't go undone. Is my time running low? Oh, you have about a minute and a half. Minute and a half. I'll still sell you my minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, you voted twice on this. And now it's coming up for a referendum. 
I don't know, this referendum, if it was going to come, it should have been before the voting. I think we're kind of putting the cart in front of the horse. And well, once you start this, you, you lost control of the Common Council. And that's all I got to say. I'll even give a half a minute back. Thanks, Thank John. You, <clears throat> uh, next is Mary Jo Quilling. Mary Jo, can I get your home address, please? Yes, it's uh, N6404 Shamrock Court. N6404 Shamrock Court. Plymouth. And where is that? In Plymouth. In Plymouth. Okay, Mary Jo, you will have five minutes, please. Okay, okay. well, thank you for having us. Um, I'm, my name is Mary Jo Quilling, and I'm the coordinator, well, I was the coordinator of Tobacco-Free Sheboygan County Coalition until this last week, but I'm a coalition member um, with the Tobacco Free, and then with me I have Laverne Horg, who is also a longtime member of the coalition as well, back in 1992, I think. Basically, what we wanted to do is educate um, the council on what the coalition has been doing, um, and kind of, I put a packet together that you should all have. Um, it's got some great statistics for Sheboygan County, the impact um, that tobacco has, which is the number one preventable killer for the county. And so I also wanted to talk about three things that the coalition has been working with, um, and those areas are youth initiatives, cessation, and smoke-free environments. As far as youth go, you probably have read in the paper the Wisconsin Winds Program. We worked with law enforcement um, throughout the county, and this has been a very, very successful program. It started a couple years ago um, statewide. It went from 36% of the retailers willing to sell tobacco to minors to this year less than 8%. Um, we finished up just recently a couple weeks ago. So this has been a real positive thing. Tobacco to minors um, is uh, about youth access. Tobacco is a gateway drug. And the longer we can keep kids off tobacco, the less likelihood it is that they're going to be smokers. Uh, most people that do smoke probably, even in this room, will say they started before they were 18. So that's a real big push that we're working on. Secondly, um, we're working to reduce the rate of women who smoke during pregnancy. In Sheboygan County, one of the pages that you have in your pamphlets, it's, it's a pink page. It talks about the percent of smokers, um, women smokers that smoke while they're pregnant. In Sheboygan County, we're at 19 percent. Um, at the time that this was done, and um, state average is 16%. So we started a program called First Breath um, to help um, pregnant moms to not smoke. We have over 80 women that have been in the program so far. And the reason, again, why we chose this population, those women are going to have pr uh, less, more likelihood of having low birth weight ba babies, uh, premature deliveries, um, sudden infant death is higher, and also respiratory problems, just to name a few. The third area that we're working on is restaurants and um, smoke-free environments. And at this point in time, we've had 80 different um, restaurants, um, as well as a number of hotels, go smoke-free. Um, this is also a good thing, um, especially when we're talking about secondhand smoke, and we know that secondhand smoke impacts everybody, whether you're a smoker or not. Um, the restaurant people have, um, employees have 5 to 8% uh, more likelihood of lung cancer that work uh, as a waiter, or wait staff, or a bartender in a restaurant where smoking is allowed. So these are the efforts that we're working on, um, and I think you can see that it is the number one preventable killer. And also on that pink paper, the burden of tobacco in Sheboygan County, they talked about the economic impact. And that's what I want to conclude with, the ec economic impact for tobacco for Sheboygan Boygan County it comes to a cost of about 33 million a uh, year, and along with that, about uh, in the health care cost, um, and then along with that, uh, lost productivity for work is about 29 million. So that's that's really impacts all of us. So I guess I'm giving you some food for thought. The purpose was to educate, um, get some dialogue going, and um, I've got contact numbers there that you can reach myself or. Uh, Mary Schuler from St. Nick's Hospital is a coalition chair, along with Marie Sager from the Health Department Public Health Nurse. So I thank you. Thank you. Thanks, How'd I do? Great. I mean, <laughs> a minute to spare. 
Thank you for the time you've given us. Thank you. Thank you. And next would be Henry Capitillo. Henry, would be, you be so kind to give me your address? Yes, uh, 1619 North 38th Street. And that is in the town of Sheboygan. Thank you. And you will have five minutes, sir. Well, some of you may be glad I will not be speaking on Sheridan Park. <laughs> and what I will be speaking about is pretty much what I come here almost every council meeting to speak about. And that is fiscal accountability. Um, I'm here basically representing our organization. I'm the executive director of Home Inc. We own the building on 9th and Superior. It spans the entire block. Um, this is a copy of our tax bill. We paid this in 2003, $17,514.61. We are a nonprofit, but this is what we paid in property taxes. The reason I'm here is I think that when you're looking at your budget, which is one of the probably the most important things that you'll be doing within this next month, um, and every person that came here that wanted to be considered for the aldermatic seat, um, if you were all paying attention, everyone mentioned property tax, the rate of increase of their property tax, and the concern of keeping the property taxes to a bare minimum. The article that I'm going to allude to is an article from the Sheboygan Press. It is the November 7th Sunday edition. It is the editorial page, and it says, County 2005 Budget Step in the Right Direction. And the reason I'm, I've, I would ask that the aldermen and also people that are out in the community to get a copy of this and to read it because um, I, would, I would compliment the Sheboygan Press because they did an excellent job in explaining of how your property taxes would increase even if the city would not be asking for any additional dollars. And the reason that that happens is that Every year, property taxes, or the property value of every, every dwelling in the city of Sheboygan is reassessed. They, they look at the increased value, and the tax rate, which is the rate that uh, the, the property is assessed per $1,000, is then looked at, and that is then multiplied by the value of your home and that will give you what the additional tax that you'll be paying for the following year. Uh, an example is here in this article. It says, supervisors passed a $144 million spending plan Tuesday night. Requires a $42.9 million from taxpayers in Sheboygan County. That's $1.9 million more than they paid this year. Okay. Then it goes further and explains how you can actually that a home where it says in 2004, your home valued at 100,000 with the county's tax rate of 6.4 per 1,000, you paid 640. In 2005, because of the 6.6% rise in property value, your home is worth $106,600. With a tax rate of $6.28, your tax bill for County purposes is $669.50. That's $29.50 more than you paid in 2004. So automatically that's going to be increasing. And it says that's where you're looking at the tax rate. Then they say 1.9 million increase in the levy is 4.63%, a reasonable amount when you factor in inflationary increases for the county it's facing. That is the levy. So when you're looking at your expenditures and how much you're going to spend more than you spent last year, you're going to be looking at a tax levy of an increase. So what they're saying in the county, it says, Adam Payne correctly points out that the county is holding the line on both the tax rate and the levy. 
and then it goes further, the challenge of the county board is to continue the focus on the levy more than the tax rate. By keeping the tax levy in check, the tax rate will follow. What that means is if you have a handle on your spending, you won't have to worry about the tax rate because that will follow in because you're not gonna be spending as much as you, you would. So what I would recommend is that you look at this and for everyone that's here, um, there, to give credit to some of the aldermen, um, in fact, two of the aldermen are not here. Excuse Alderman me, Groff. I'm sorry, but your five minutes is up. Henry, we will be having a budget uh, hearing next week, so if you'd like, you're more than welcome to come back. Sure, on the 25th, I will be back. 22nd. 22nd. On the 22nd, I will be back. Okay. And then I can uh, let you know who the aldermen were that uh, <laughs> should be complimented. Okay. And we have Sarah Resch. Is it Resch or Rush? Resch. Resch, sorry. And Sarah, could you give me your home address, please? 1417 Kentucky Avenue. I'd like to address the council tonight on behalf of Sheridan Park, our insightful forefathers, our children, grandchildren, and all the future generations of the Sheridan Park neighborhood. Since many of those mentioned don't have a voice in our community, I'd like to present some facts to this council on their behalf. Fact number one, the Kimmy Report picked Sheridan Park as their number one choice for the new police station. True. Of course, their directive was to look for the most cost efficient spot. The park has no acquisition fee because it's a park. Low demolition cost, because it's a park. And it doesn't take anything off the tax base, because it's a park. When did our parks become fair game for development? Fact number two, nobody came forth to complain about destroying the park until the council actually voted to put the police station there. That's true. However, the council targeted a park in a lower income, racially diverse, blue collar neighborhood Many of the older residents speak and read very little English. Since reading the Sheboygan Press was basically the only way residents would hear about the issue, many didn't know there was an issue. In addition, subscribing to the Sheboygan Press is not always a top priority in hardworking homes struggling to make ends meet. This resulted in many residents who were caught completely unaware of the council's discussion and decision to take the park. You asked why didn't they complain before? I ask you. Why didn't you distribute flyers to the neighborhood or have a community input meeting to find out how they felt? Could it be that you were afraid of the answer? Fact number three, putting a police station in the park will not affect traffic in the area. False. On Tuesday, September 28, 2004, the Sheboygan Press ran an article about the Special Municipal Court Investigation Committee. The intent of this committee is for Sheboygan to create its own municipal court. Putting the financial questions aside, the city would have to cover the cost of running the court, now paid for by the county. I looked at the numbers of potential cases. According to the press article, annually there are 7,100 cases with fines. Quoting the article, the city court could operate twice a month, running into the late afternoon hours, and the committee is recommending against night sessions for now, unquote. Doing the math, 7,100 divided by 24 days, twice a month, equals 295.8 cases per day that they're open. If the courts open 12 hours each of those days, that means they would have to process 24 and a half cases per hour. What does this have to do with Sheridan Park? According to Alderman Werner, and I quote, the court, the court could move to the city's new police station after it's built, end quote. I believe that 24 and a half cases per hour will cause an enormous amount of traffic and congestion in an already busy area not to mention the parking problem. Most of the homes around the park have no off-street parking. Where are they all gonna park? On top of everything else, I can't imagine throwing that much more traffic into a school zone. In closing, I'd like to address the mayor's comments at the November 1st council meeting. You stated that it's morally the right decision choosing safety over green space. You also said that when you sit in your yard, you need to know you're, sa you're safe. That's an easy statement to make when you have a yard. You're not only destroying a park, you're taking the closest thing these neighbors have to their own backyard. Our petition gave voice to 3,000 Sheboygan citizens all saying the same thing, save Sheridan Park. They're speaking. Are you listening? Please put your pride aside and let the people of Sheboygan decide if Sheridan Park lives or dies. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 1623, Alderman Montemayor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to say a few words about um, okay. number 16. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, 1614 yeah. and 1615. Okay. Um, I was contacted by some local businessmen who are willing to fund a study by Chuck Engberg of Engberg Anderson Design Partnership. They'll pay for the study, which would provide information on which shared services have been successful in other communities and would be pertinent to Sheboygan. They will pay for this study to save the city of Sheboygan and the county money long range. This is talking about shared services. I will ask the council to accept, at the, nec at the next council meeting, I will ask the council to accept the information that they are willing to pay for, read the information that they are willing to pay for, and perhaps act on the information. In addition, the same businessman possibly, if necessary, would pay for a strip of land from the Volrath Company that the Volrath Company is willing to sell 30 feet wide along the south edge of their property that would make the full four acres for the police station. These are Sheboygan people willing to pay to help us learn more about shared services. Thank you. Thank you. Also out of this, 16, from 16.1 through 16.23, 16.20 will be held, and also 16.21 will be held. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. Okay. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Warner? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1624 through 34 to be referred. 1635 by Alderman Stephan, authorized retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Marilyn Ryan Reinald. versus, versus City of Sheboygan. Alderman Stephan. Uh, Your Honor, I need to ask for suspension. Sorry. We have a motion before us for suspension. Is there any objections? Hearing none, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded resolution be put upon this passage under discussion. Hearing none, will you call the roll, please? Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. And Bauman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1636 by Alderman Bonet, Manny, Perez, Van Akron, Bauman, Peterson, Groff, Berg, Rinfleisch, Sigali, Serta, Stefan, Warner, Montemayor, and Vanderweel. Congratulating the Sheboygan South, Sheboygan South varsity football team for their accomplishments during the 2004 football season. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent job, Sheboygan South. You bet. 1637 through 40. Well, wait, wait. Don't we have to vote on that resolution? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 1636. Go ahead, Alderman Bonet. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Make a motion to, for the resolution to be put upon its passage. Move to second a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1637 through 39 to be referred to, will lie over. 1640 by Alderman Stefan Berg, Manny, Montemayor. Authorizing a transfer of appropriations in a 2004 budget. Alderman Stefan. Your Honor, I once again need to ask for suspension. 
Right. There's a motion on the floor for suspension. Is there any objections to suspension? Hearing none. Uh, this is a author to transfer appropriations in the budget. Um, we had previously, I believe the council had passed, hiring additional police officer contingent on the funds. The funds have been found to finish it out this year and also fund it in next year's budget, subject to approval, of course, at the budget time. But they didn't feel the urgency to get the officer hired in the, in the hiring and training procedure started. So that's why we're suspending the rules. So I'd move that we authorize the transfer. Thank you. We have motion and second before us. Under discussion. Hearing none. Alderman Warner. Under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, I did get to attend that finance meeting, and uh, this money is from 2004 dollars, and it will be used to hire one patrol officer this year. At, and at that finance meeting, uh, Director Rich Gephardt explained this as well as the funding that would be in place to fund a position in 2005. So. I think salary and grievance, the Common Council, public protection have all approved hiring a police officer but could find the money. And my thanks goes out to, to Rich, the mayor, uh, and the finance committee for their efforts to come up with funding to get this officer hired this year. Thank you. Alderman Montemay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to congratulate Alderman Warner and Rich. I didn't possibly believe you were going to find the money, and you truly did. Good for you. Thank you. If to know there, would you please call the roll, please? Serta? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Bonet? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Congratulations, Chief. Got it done. 1641 through 47 to be referred, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. On 1644, my resolution about asking for a referendum at the primary, or if there is no primary, then on the spring election, regarding saving Sheridan Park. I simply wanted to explain why I'm asking to have that resolution referred to uh, public works and forestry. I want their opinion on record regarding the resolution. This resolution to ask the men and women of Sheboygan to have their say about the destruction of Sheridan Park. And also to the Finance Committee so I can find out if there's any cost associated with the referendum. So that our next council meeting, all the ducks will be in a line, all the T's will be crossed, all the I's will be dotted. Remember, this document is about Sheridan Park, not the construction of a police station building. Sheboygan knows we need a larger, safer, more efficient police station. That's not the question. So think long and carefully in this next two weeks about whether to ignore, which would mean of no vote, on this resolution. And of course, I'll say more next time. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on speaking on uh, documents to be referred, I would move to file document 1644. Second. We have a motion and a second before us to file document 1644. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Here we go again. Not once, but three times this council has said, move on with the Sheridan site. Now, <clears throat> because some were not happy, with the decision, they want to stop the entire process, process, and I think that's wrong. Alderman Berg hit the nail on the head two weeks ago when he said, the real issue is not Sheridan Park, but political opportunity. He stated, just watch who takes out papers for this office or that office, and lo and behold, here we are. Too bad that only one of the opponents of using Sheridan Park had the courage to bring in a document. This council made the right decision two weeks ago. This council made the right decision twice in August. It is time to put this to rest. I support filing and I support moving forward with this project. It's about time. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. 
again, it, it comes to me as a uh, complete shock uh, to have a petition uh, collected by a large, very large group of sincere people who simply are asking the council to consider their effort and to look at it. Yes, this issue has been before us more than once. That should prove to us that this issue is very important. And every time we say it's been here three times or two times, what's it going to take for us to say, we need to start listening to the people? There's lots of people in favor of saving the park. I understand now there's a petition floating around in favor of building a police station. That, to me, only confirms and validates the need for a referendum. You've got two good, strong groups that want one thing and one wants the other. May the best man win. What is wrong with that? That's what our democracy is all about. Not about us slamming our foot down and saying, no, I don't care how many times you ask me, no. Now, the point has been made that we elect representatives to represent us, that does not mean that we let you loose. It also means that because we elect people for two years, the damage they can do is irreversible before they can even address whether you should be elected or not. There's a lot of damage done. This is why people in the legislature and the US Constitution allows this, for people to come before us and say, we have enough people for you guys to even consider it. For us to slap them, and, and I, I think, Your Honor, I think this is, this, is, this is a point where, talk about frustration. This is, this, for us to slap these people in the face a third time is unconscionable. People have talked about how this should stop. Well, slapping people in the face should stop. And all we have to do, if, if we want it to stop, all we have to do is call for a referendum. I'll wait till you get that hook back up. So you can hear. All right. All we have to do, crossing my arm here, all we have to do is call for a referendum, let the people decide, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. The League of Municipalities said we legally can use the park. The League of Municipalities has a four-page article about the importance of parks and recreations, reiterating what we learned from Dr. Carl Byron, that police stations cause more crime in an area, not less, plus a lot of other things in the League of Municipality magazine. Um, the Milwaukee Journal, Kenilworth Place, talks about the revitalization of that area. It looks exactly like Jefferson Park. In fact, I thought it was, but the reason it was it has been revitalized is because it's old strong houses across the street from a park close to a school and it was revitalized and of course the area around Sheridan Park is obvious that it's coming up for revitalization and regentrification because it's across the street from a park and close to a school and if a police station is built there it will continue to deteriorate the Kimmy report says about that site, or may be a contentious public issue. No kidding. You were told that it would be a contentious public issue. It is. We must let the people at least say yay or nay. Remember, 3,000 signatures said, yes, we want to save the park. And they did not approach 37,000 people. 3,000 people said they wanted to save the park, and they only approached another thousand. That means the ratio was 89 to 90 percent of the people that they talked to that wanted to save the park. This is a big deal. This isn't putting in a new street. This is a big deal to tear down a park. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Berg. Well, like I said, when I was elected chairman of the Committee to Hall, that we are going to make some tough decisions. A lot of people aren't going to like what we're doing. And we're not slapping anybody in the face. We have a duty 
to our taxpayers to save them money. This is one big way we can save a lot of money. And don't kid yourself by people coming up with all these facts and figures. It's been a proven fact. This was the number one site chosen by the experts, chosen by the experts that run the police department. The chief, his, de his deputy chief, and all his patrol people. Let's not go any further. Let's get this thing done tonight. And like, like I said, we're not slapping anybody in the face. Back to you, Alderman Montemere. Thank you again. The truly effective way to save money, to cut costs, the truly effective way is shared services. We all know that. And we all know that that is going to be difficult. But that is the true way to save money. And if the police station goes at Sheridan Park, and this is not the reason I want the park saved. I want it saved because it's a park. That'll put one more nail in the coffin of shared services. Thank you. Alderman Stephan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think most of you know that I, I did not support this building the site at Sheridan Park. But I think it, it behooves us to take a vote. I was wrong. I thought the car could stay on top of screamers for all I care. We had thousands of letters or petitions then. They didn't send them in and ask for a referendum. I thought the car could stay. The council felt otherwise. It's over. I think the same issue is here. Shortly after I was elected as an alderman, 16 of us said, yep, we want to build a police station. I know Marilyn Montemeyer. I'm a friend of hers. I know her goal is not to stop this police station. But the result is that it's delaying it. This police station hasn't been built for 40 years. But it's been studied how many times? Why would you do a study and not build it? Because you get 16 people to say, yeah, we want to build it. Yeah, let's study it. And then you get two to say, I don't like the site. And two more say, now it's too expensive. And three more say, wait, let's build it over here. This, they just sold this building over here, and it doesn't get built. You know, we owe it to our police officers to build them a building. This isn't the perfect site. We, we're trying to work with, we've got a design now. Maybe we can interpret a park into there. That's fine. I think we've heard the people. I think if we can put a park in there, the more power to us. But I think, you know, we owe it to move on. It's not my site. It's not the one that I voted for. But I owe it, the council voted on it on well, two or three occasions at least. I think now we've got to go because if we have this referendum, win or lose, there's another referendum. You know, maybe somebody's going to say, why did you do it in February? Nobody votes in February. Let's do it in April. More people vote in April. And then it's more people vote in November. We've voted on this how many times? It's not my site, but I can't see delaying it any longer. And I'll support the motion to file. Thank you. Alderman Mentor, Mayor, last time. Back to you. All right, thank you. Last time, I agree. Uh, and of course, we could, we could now have a ceremonial groundbreaking if you'd chosen the right spot in the first place, the one that we were all expecting. Thank you. Hang, hang on a minute. Alderman Vanderwill. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. As elected officials, we're chosen to get all the information and make a decision. The dangerous part of a referendum is misinformation. When I call the people, some of the people who signed the petition, most of them that I had talked to were under the impression that the county owned land was to be given to the city for free. This is absolutely not true. Giving the city the county land for free was an afterthought of the original county proposal. It went to the committees of the county board and never came to the full board of the city of Sheboygan. Until recently, I had every intention of supporting the referendum. When people tell me that they wouldn't have signed the petition if they would have known the truth, I can no longer support it. Thank you. Steve, you want to say something before we move on? Uh, an issue of uh, uh, procedure. Uh, the way I read our, our ordinance, and I'm looking at uh, 2-191, as far as the uh, preference for the motions, uh, I, I would look at by the fact that there's a motion to file that puts the, the previous uh, recommendation to refer to the committees uh, basically as a competing motion, as I see it, and uh, under our ordinance, and I think it's Robert's Rules of Order as well, the uh, uh, motion to commit to a standing committee would take precedence over postponing indefinitely, which is to file. So uh, I guess what I would suggest is there be a vote taken, first of all, to refer to standing committees uh, and 
you know, depending on that go, how that goes uh, uh, on the uh, motion to file. Okay, very good. Thank you. I'll be right here. I'll be right here. I'll be right here. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor, and thank you, Steve. I was going to wait till the temperature lowered a little bit in here before I bring that issue up. Uh, that Great. we have dealt with that in the past before, going what actually takes precedence and Great, exactly. motion to refer does take precedence. So that would be the first vote. So speaking strictly on that motion, which is to uh, refer a document to committee, uh, and not necessarily what the document is about. Uh, we just had four candidates here uh, ask us for their vote and their support to be on this council. Um, and they spoke of respect, they spoke of service, they spoke of respect to, to their constituents and respect to feather, uh, their fellow uh, aldermen. And I think we've just shown right here by not allowing a document to go to the committee, you're not showing respect to both the aldermen that suggested the document. Uh, we're not showing respect to both committees that is being referred to. Uh, and uh, I think it's going quite against the grain of what we've just seen from the public and their impression of why people want to be aldermen. Uh, and uh, I certainly welcome uh, the new alderman, and hopefully this is not how pr process and procedure goes from here on out. Uh, the document, I feel, should be referred to the committee for discussion out of respect for us fellow aldermen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Manny, did you want to say anything? And then. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have deep concern about, obviously, uh, the long-term impact of the decision. And that's very painful for me especially because I was one voting on this issue in that we as a council did not have full and complete information at our hands. Some was misleading. That misleading information uh, was very key for me in, in affecting my vote. And I think people not only need to be heard, but we need to be proactive as a city in, in helping people uh, voice their concern and even recognize the issue that will be uh, uh, on the docket for discussion. And I don't think we well did that. I don't think we intended to not include people in the conversation, but de facto we didn't well do that. Given that reality, and given a second reality that's, that in my mind is that a referendum itself is possibly and quite uh, potentially problematic, that its information in itself might be misleading, I want an advisory referendum. Because in the first or in that ward, in that district, it might be that most people by a majority of 60% would not object to having a police station there. But given that possible reality, you still could have a, a majority in the city that said, put the police site there. I want to know what those people in that ward and that district feel. A referendum would give us a lot of information that we have never had fully at our hands. Advisory, yes. Uh, binding no. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. The issues have been discussed in committees for years, for 40 years. It's time to move on. This document should be uh, denied referral to the committees, and uh, that and I guess we would then not have to vote to file. Steve, is that correct? If it's not referred, do we still have to vote to file? Yes. Okay. So I would urge the council. It's no more than a delay tactic. It's that's all it is. We do not want to forward this to the committee. Okay, thank you. Alderman Rank, flash back to you. Yeah, just a point of order then for Steve. Um, other documents from 1641 to 1647 were referring. Um, why does this need a vote if it was to be referred? <clears throat> why does this need a vote versus 1641 to 1647 don't need votes to be referred? Well, those are basically put on the agenda that way, and it's presumed that that's the motion, and there's no objection. That's Taken on those. Just only because of. Just want a clarification that it's not, it, it's automatic unless somebody brings up an objection at all times. Right. Thank you. All my friends. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I, I guess I just wanted to make clear for the fifth or sixth time that my, my comments and my decision and my strong belief in allowing people to speak uh, is not a delay tactic. Uh, I think some aldermen, including your honor, would remember several, a couple of years ago, I wrote uh, an article to the uh, Sheboygan Press, which, which was printed uh, under the caption to the point. 
during which I out outlined my heartfelt support for Bill in a police station and my reasons for it. Uh, the support was, hasn't changed, and the reasons which haven't changed one bit. Um, this can, my action and, and my position on not destroying Sheridan Park should not be, and I wish it would not be, construed as a delay tactic anymore, Your Honor. And I say this with respect. You promised to build a police station the first time you ran. That's eight years ago. It hasn't been built. Things take time. Sometimes things take time. If this station is not built at Sheridan Park, I don't know what I have to do to assure everyone, including the police department, that I would be a cheerleader, just as I've always been, even more so, to fast track the process. Because I really believe, and I respect the police station for feeling that way, but I really believe that they feel, given the atmosphere and what's happened here, this is the first time ever, ever, they've had the majority to build it. And I, I understand that they're afraid that it may not be built. I understand that they're concerned that somebody's trying to block it. It's tr whether those true concerns are true or not, that's another issue. But I can assure you from my point, I would champion a police station, but not at Sheridan Park. So please, this is not a delay tactic. Some things take time. I think that what we've got here next year or next month, you're still going to have the majority vote to build that police station. Thank you. Thank you. You made my point very clear. It does take time, and we've been talking about it for the last seven years, six years, and it's taken long enough. Now it's time to move forward and build the police station. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. With this po position comes a tremendous amount of responsibility. And correct me if I'm wrong, but my vote, when I choose to exercise that vote to represent District 6 is no more powerful or no less powerful than any of the other 15 aldermen represented it in this room. That's the democracy here of checks and balances. And like I said earlier, not everybody agrees that, that the police station should not be built there and I'm choosing to represent that other side. And I think we need to clarify because the county site has come up on numerous occasions who said we're going to build it there? Don't we have to go through the same process? But we continue to imply that if we don't build it at Sheridan Park, it's automatically going to be at the county. No. And I think the public is hearing that, and I think we need more clarification. We would have to go through this whole process again. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Honor. I'll make this quick. I'm hearing that we didn't give enough information to the people. We didn't listen to the people. In uh, spring of 2004, WHBL Smallfeld, Smallfeld at Large had a survey, which I don't have access to, but I do remember, because he's gone now on WHBL websites, uh, that website's gone too. But uh, I do remember that the police station at Sheridan Park was high on that survey. And in June of uh, 2004, the Sheboygan Press did a survey on their, uh, on their internet. And out of that survey, 42.3% voted for Sheridan, and 36.1% voted for the county, and 21.6% voted for others. So this information has been out since spring, and it's been talked about since spring. I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. OK, we have a motion before us to refer. Motion before us to refer. To Public Works and Finance. To Public Works and Finance. Would you call the roll, please, on that? And I vote would be to refer sure. to Public Work and Finance. Right. I know. Everybody understand that? Okay. <clears throat> and I vote would be to refer Correct. this document to Public Works and Finance. Bauman. No. Berg. No. Bonet. No. Serta. No. Manny. Yes. Montemayor. Yes. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. No. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. No. And Warner. Four eyes and nine no's. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> Alderman Warner. On that, I would move to file. Second. We have a motion and a second before us. Is there any other discussion? I vote to file. No vote. You know what that is. 
Okay. Mark. Call the roll, please. Oh, Mark, did you step? Can you just explain that? I mean, <clears throat> If you if you want to file this document, then you vote aye. Okay. 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 Berg. This is to file the document. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Manny. No. Montemayor. No. Perez. No. Rinfleisch. No. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. <clears throat> and Bauman. Nine to four. Documents filed. <laughs> okay, moving on. 1648, by Building Use Committee, recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Roger Lamb, offering his suggestions and drawings to accommodate, accommodate both the police station and a well-designed compact park recreation center. Alderman Warner. Uh, Hold on a minute, I gotta find that one, Your Honor. I did, did wanna speak on 1645, but we'll uh, save that for another day. Okay, yeah, that was referred. First on 1648, I'd move uh, the report of committee be accepted and placed on file and that the uh, document be forwarded to that group. Second. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion, Alderman Montemayor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is going to be referred to the Building Use Committee's Architect Selection Subcommittee. And I probably should know, but I don't know who is, who are the members who is on the Architect Selection Subcommittee. Good question. Alderman Warner. <laughs> I'm actually not being referred to this document to be placed on file, but the issue of looking at incorporating the park so that on the west end of that lot is going to be referred to the architect. Dr. Long, local designer and artist, right. a really nice idea that he put together, and we would like any architectural firm that is chosen to take that into consideration when they look at uh, developing that site. Okay, and the drawing is going to be transmitted to the Building Use Committee's Architect Selection Subcommittee. The drawing is going to be made available to that, to that group to share with the architect, and that group is staff. The, Not, oh, the Building Use Committee's Architect Selection Subcommittee is city staff? It's actually city staff. They oh. go through the process of purchasing. It's, it's verbiage. I, I didn't write the verbiage for this, but what happens is the purchasing department along with staff from the police department and Rich <coughs> and the planning staff meet and discuss with architects. They have a, a procedure they go through in purchasing <coughs> for these types of things to uh, come up with what they make as a recommendation for an architect, which will happen after they finish their job. So building use isn't really involved in that directly. They do that on their, on their own as part of the job. I don't know if Tom or somebody, Tom is on that group. Uh, Steve, the chief, all the deputy chiefs. Uh, Kim Verhaus, Rich is involved in it, I believe, Rich. Are you on, not, you're not in that one? Okay, he is in building use, but so. Are, is the city staff, those people that you just mentioned, are they all subcommittee people of all of the different committees, of finance and public works? And you're getting hung up on the word subcommittee. They're not really a subcommittee. They're, it's just the way it's handled. It, okay, like so I that's said, not actual correct verbiage? Correct. Okay. I believe that they're not a subcommittee. Oh, it's not know. a created committee or anything. It's, Basically, it's a committee of some staff people that have been selected to interview some potential architects for the police station. Could we just amend those words to say city staff? Sure. To make it more accurate? That would be fine. Because, you know, 10, ten years down the line, we'll say, I wonder who they were. But city staff would make it clearer. That's okay. Yep. Yeah, yes, I'm, please. I'm fine with that. Okay. Do I have a motion? Yes, please. Thank you. Second? Second. Under discussion. You are amending this. Alderman Vanderwell. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to ask Steve McLean if there was a, or a, Attorney McLean, if there was a reason why we use that language or if that's just how it turned out. The reference to the subcommittee? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't, uh, I wasn't involved in drafting that either. Uh, but I think it's technically correct that there is no 
Architect Selection Subcommittee. It's primarily through the purchasing agent's mm -hmm. office. He generates requests for proposals, and there's a staff group that reviews the proposals. Thank you. Okay. If there's no other discussion, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, now we've got to pass it as amended. On that, I would move to pass it uh, or file it as amended. Second. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1649, by law and licensing, recommending the Iron Beverage Operators License 6583 based on applicants' failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations on the application. Alderman Boney. Thank you, Your Honor. I make motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Aye, Your Honor. Uh, this is for Andrea Morris. Is Andrea Morris with us tonight? Andrea Morris? Your Honor, Andrea Morris is not with us tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Serta? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? And Bonet. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 16, 50, and 51 to be referred. 52, 16, 52 will lie over till next meeting. Alderman Warner. Uh, actually, Bill for. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Stefan. On uh, 1653, I would move to accept and adopt and that the resolution be put upon its passage. It's been moved in. And seconded that the 1653 be put upon a special yes, by finance recommending authoring the hiring of one, hiring of one police officer in 2004. Alderman Yeah, earlier we transferred the money under the suspension and now we're actually approving the hiring. So that's what it is. Alderman Warner. I just want to say again, Your Honor, I'm, I'm glad we were able to get this done. Thanks to you, Rich, Finance Committee, and everybody that worked on it. It's, it's nice to get this position moved forward. Yes, it is. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Manny. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. <laughs> Somebody's <Hang on>. voice changed. <laughs> 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 I, nothing. Two eyes on <laughs> one name. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Perez. Aye. Okay, <laughs> yeah. This is the resolution for Aye. hiring of the officer. Yeah. Rin Fleisch. Sagali. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Warner? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. Serta? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Chief, again, congratulations. When will you be bringing a new person aboard? Tomorrow. We're contacting someone tomorrow. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Super. 1654 and 50. Oh, 1654 through 59 will lie over. 1660 through 62 to be referred. Six, 1536 by Alderman Stefan, Berg, Manny, Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget. Alderman Stefan. I would move to approve. Do you want to do both of them? You want to do both of them right away? Yeah. Right away? 1537 right away. also? Sure. We have a motion before us for 1536 and 37 under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? <clears throat> um, Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 13 ayes. <coughs> motion carried. 1663 will go to finance. 1664, finance. 1665, a resolution by Alderman Wallman authorizing entering into a development agreement between Sheboygan Senior Community Inc. and the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Wallman. Your Honor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us, but Alderman, oh, excuse me, Attorney McLean. 
Uh, I guess Alderman Bauman, I'd recommend that that lay over. Uh, okay. The uh, Oregon Sorry. Senior Community is, is asking that that uh, that only be contingent on action on the uh, Niagara Avenue street vacation, which had to be republished, so uh, won't come up for action again until the December 6th meeting. Okay. I withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw my second. Okay. okay. That will lie over. 1666, a resolution by Alderman Warner and Bauman authorizing the filing of an application with the United States American Department of Transportation authorizing the executing of the contract pertaining to grants of the calendar year 2005. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion a second before us under discussion. Under discussion, your honor, uh, this will allow Sheboygan Transit to apply for its federal transportation grants which cover the lion's share of their budget each year and something that needs to be done. Do you know the discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1551, RC by Public Works, authorizing entering into a development agreement with Walmart concerning certain public roadway improvements serving the area of the Walmart project located at South Taylor Drive in Washington Avenue. Alderman Bowman. Well, Your Honor, at, uh, I really don't want to do this, but I would move that it be put upon its passage. We have a motion before us in a second that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Go ahead. The record ought to be clear that uh, what's this is coming from uh, Committee of the Whole and uh, should probably have another motion to amend to take out the uh, reference to roadway improvements, uh, just to the roadway. I make that motion that the amendment be made, and that was on the roadway improvements. Right. Just removing the words roadway from the two paragraphs in the resolution 121.0405. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second before us, an amendment. Under discussion. I'll get back, you want to talk on the other thing. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, back to the, now, all in the moment, another motion for passage as amended. Well, Your Honor, again, I hate to make the motion, but uh, I would make, <laughs> I'll make the motion to pass it as amended. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second before us. Under discussion, Alderman Press. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Just wanted to say that, uh, to thank, actually, to thank the planning uh, department for the great job that they did and to voice a couple of concerns that, uh, from, from people who called me which were addressed during the uh, committee of their whole, but I nonetheless wanted to address them here so that they're entering to the record. And one was a concern from a gentleman who called me today asking, uh, what exactly was gonna happen with the old building and what plans the city had in terms of uh, maintaining the building so it wouldn't become an eyesore uh, and so forth. And the other concern from another individual, what is the city going to do if it can do anything at all to, to provide some, some sort of support or assistance to the businesses who are going to be uh, almost left alone with all, with all that huge traffic flow. Uh, I understand from the community of the whole that perhaps there's not a lot much that the city can do. Uh, it's a little bit out of our, our uh, it's a little bit out of our jurisdiction. But uh, whatever it is that we can do, I would ask that the planning department uh, attempt to do. I also wanted to say that at times I, I I was reluctant to support this, and at times I, I wanted to support it. it. It turns out that I will support it. Uh, and primarily for two good reasons. I believe that the city, uh, because of the way it's geographically positioned, Lake, town, town of Wilson, town of Sheboygan, and Colder, uh, in any manner that we can, we, sh we need to uh, expand our tax base. And uh, this is one excellent example in which we can do that. The second reason that uh, a strong uh, point is the uh, creation of 400 jobs. Needless to say, it's, it's about 150 more that are, that are in existence now. So given those two facts, I think it's, it's uh, very important that the, uh, that the council uh, approve uh, the agreement. Thank you. I would say that's good future planning, correct? Yes, it is. There you go. Finally. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Sagali? No. Stefan? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? No. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Ten eyes, three no's. Motion carried. Other matters, Steve? 1667 is a communication from Kristen Farver of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society requesting permission to hold the MS walk in the city on April 24, 2005. And that will lie over? 1688 is a communication received by the mayor from Glenn Pilling stating his concerns with Alterman Montemayor's statements made at the November 1st council meeting suggesting the public referendum is a proper solution to the police station site selection. That goes to building use. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye.